work at the Facebook Media Center. My name is Sean O'Connell. I'm the managing director of CinemaBlend.com, and I am really happy to be joined by Mr. Scott Eastwood, who is here promoting The Fate of the Furious, the eighth Fast and Furious film from Universal Studios. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited to have you here. We have questions that we solicited from our readers who are super excited about the film coming out next week. Uh, they want to ask you a number of things about it. I'm going to sure. read a few of them from them. And then, of course, if you guys want to weigh in with questions down below, we're happy to take your questions as they come in during the course of the time. But I want to start with, I'll start with a pretty easy one for you. Okay. Um, Katrina Wright it. wrote us, to, and she wants to know what it's like being the new guy in the cast. Katrina. Katrina. It is like the first day at school. Uh, you know, I mean, this franchise has been going on for so long. You know, me coming in, I was just so honored to be a part of it. Sure. Uh, I was like, you know, where do you, where do you need me? I'll, I'll go anywhere. Uh, but it, what, what was really great about it is, is they really just, op you know, just, just let me in with open arms, okay. which was awesome. So your character is associated with a character who we know as Mr. Nobody. Yep. So yep. Michael Lee asked this, and I, I think this is a good place to start, too. What can you tell us about your character without spoiling anything going into the film? Sure. Uh, well, he is a protege under uh, under Kurt Russell's character, mm -hmm. and uh, the team sort of gives him the name of Little Nobody. Uh, <laughs> so he's the brunt. He's the brunt of a few jokes. Okay. At my expense. How'd you feel about that, Little? Nobody? I liked it. You know, it was fun because it, it was fun to play a character that was sort of uh, he's, he's very different than me. He's you know sort of a rule, a rule guy. You know, uh, you know, by the book. Uh, kind of guy, and that was fun. Okay. I, I, I thought I had a good time doing it. Do we learn more about that organization that you guys are part of? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, I like that. Okay. Maybe. All right. Well, I know some people ask this too. How much activity do you get in the cars? Uh, yeah, I get some good car time. Do you really? I do. Uh, I'm, I'm the rookie, so I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not as seasoned as a driver as uh, as the rest of the team. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I get some good car time. So now we're basing this off of things that we've seen in the series prior to sure. this and the trailer so far. But Sarah was asking that the series appears to use practical effects as much as possible. Um, is that accurate? And were you a little bit surprised in filming the stunt scenes of just how much they're able to accomplish? You know, well, the great thing about these these films is they have an incredible stunt team, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's it's, I mean, it's it's massive. What most people don't understand is. There's a there's a whole second unit that films alongside the first unit mm -hmm. that handles a lot of the heavy lifting. So they do all the car stunts, right. all the big vis effect shots that you know we can't do or don't need to have the principal actors incorporated in. So uh, what's actually is re really is cool for the actor is when I got to see the film for the first time mm -hmm. like a week ago. I get to see all these shots and all the stunts come to life mm -hmm. that I read. You know, you're reading the script and you're going, oh, okay, cool, car flies over submarine. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool, here, this, that. Fair. And then, so you, <laughs> you sort of get to see all this stuff come to life and you go, wow, you know, that, that, was, that was so much bigger than I thought it was. Or, you know, it was, right. you know it's, 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 so it's fun for, for uh, you know, the actor. And I think with, uh, with this series, too, Almost like the Bond series now, the locations are as big of a part of, sure. of the, each new chapter. So, yeah. talk Cuba, to me a bit about right? yeah, where do you guys Cuba, go in this one? New York, right? And then uh, uh, you know, you, you, Iceland. It, ice, well, it was shot in Iceland. Okay, but we, you know, it was Serbia, Russia. Oh, know, gotcha, and, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, uh, and you're in all those. You're in those locations. You went to those places. No, uh, we didn't. We didn't. I never had to go to Iceland. Okay. Uh, I never had to go to Cuba. Okay. Uh, oh man, you lost out. On yeah, all these yeah, I missed trips. out. I'm gonna be talking. I'm hopefully, you know, maybe talking to the writer if they'll have me back. <laughs> say, well, you know, maybe I could be in that tropical beach location too. Right, right. Well, that leads me to our, actually our next question. Uh, Anna Silva wants to know, and I think this is a good one because everything about this franchise is family, and they keep sure. adding new members of the family. Yep. Without giving away things that happen. Do you view this as a one-off, or is this? Are you part of the franchise now, and something that? <laughs> oh, hey, look, it, it, you know that's up to um, Universal and Vin and everybody who's you know invited me to be a part of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, if they'll have me back, I would love to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, okay. fingers well, crossed. Because this, I, I think they're saying that this could potentially start a new trilogy of films. Do you, sure. Do you think that there are storylines that are set up in this I think one? There's, I think there's an, an, an incredible uh, opportunity to, uh, to to make an, you know, this sort of be a, a trilogy mm -hmm. and, and, and do a, you know, a, a thing. Of, it, it, it's cool about this, this franchise. Is it's gone, some, it's changed, and it's right. morphed into so many different things. Right. right? It's obviously kept its core 
uh, its core values, right? <laughs> Family and and uh, the car culture insane and insane stunts, and, insane stunts, right. right? That has been the ante's been upped every time. Uh, but I think the sky's the limit for this franchise. What can you tell fans about F. Gary Gray? What kind of director is he like? He's great. Uh, F. Gary is, I mean, he is a, you know, he's a total visual guy. I mean, stuff that you, you go, whoa, I didn't think you could fit that in there. Or, or, you know, how are you planning on doing that? That's, right. that's pretty ballsy. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a clip. Uh, we have a clip from a new film, The Fate of the Furious, sure. which is going to be in uh, theaters on April 14th. This is a scene that's uh, it's you and The Rock and Mr. Nobody, and yep. I think it's, we're going to let it speak for itself, okay. what happens in it. So let's check it out. Give it a look. All right, that was a bad idea. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a bad idea. You don't talk like that to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, lesson learned. Yeah, lesson learned. Uh, when I went to the set of Guardians of the Galaxy, I sure. uh, interviewed Chris Pratt, and he, yeah. all he wanted to do was gush about Kurt Russell. Uh, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, for, the guy's the man. We're close to the same age. You and I grew up on Kurt's films. Sure. Tell me about working with him. What's that like? <clears throat> sure. I mean, he was, uh, I mean, I grew up on his films. Yeah. Uh, so to work with him is was, was, was sort of surreal. You know, you're going, it's Kurt Russell. Right, right, right. He's right next to me. So you get nerves like that too when you're working with an icon. He's he's just such a legend, and he's such a great actor. Right. I mean, people, I mean, he's just he runs circles over us, right, you know, right, on right. set. Right. <laughs> and you, you, everyone's going, it's just an acting class. <laughs> oh my God, just watch, right, watch right. him do it. <laughs> um, but he's also one of the nicest guys in the world too, and he's just the most down to earth. He's been in the game for forever, right? Right. And uh, yeah, he's just great. Nick Offerman yeah. uh, did the the founder with Michael Keaton, and he yeah. said it took like three takes every single time because he'd just be like, "Michael Keaton's looking at me. Yeah. Oh, he's talking to me. Oh my gosh, wait, it's my line. I have to say something." <laughs> <laughs> so I would yeah. imagine this was like with Kurt. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, a few more of our reader questions, and then we'll get to some of the things that you guys are submitting too. We're really excited to get to those questions. But Andrew Bowman wants to know. He asks, "When are you going to be in a western?" And he actually adds, "It's, uh, it's time." Oh, it's time. <laughs> so it's, it's time, time. is it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, look, it's got to be a good one. Right. It's got to be a good one. A lot of people were asking if you were up for the Dark Tower. There was a, a character named Roland who's a classic Western type. Were you ever considered for that? I don't know. You know, my agent's here. Right. We should probably have a talk. <laughs> Might be sending an email after, uh, after this is done. We should send a couple emails about that, huh? Steve? They yeah, older. they want oh, older. They want older. Oh, you look too mm, young. That's right. what it is. Yeah, that's, well, and that's a very agent -y thing to say. <laughs> oh, no, they wanted to go older. <laughs> I'm going to take one personally, too, because as a huge fan of the first Pacific Rim, I know sure. you're in Pacific Rim 2, yes. which is uh, finished shooting and now prepping to be released. Yep. Uh, what can you tell Cinema Blend readers about that? Uh, a lot of secrets, so I can't reveal too much. Understandably. Understandably. Uh, but I can tell you that it's, it's, it's 15 years into the future. Okay. Um, so there's some there's some new updates All right. that I think the fans will really like. Well, we are really excited to see a trailer for that one. So uh, we're going to get to some questions coming in from you guys as you're watching. We really appreciate you submitting them down below. Uh, Liam Corrigan asks, did you find it hard to fit into a series that's seven movies in? Uh, no, only because the cast was so gracious. Okay. Uh, if it, they had been, you know, just... Sort of, you know, the, if they didn't welcome me in like they did, right. I think I would have, I would have felt like an outsider. Do they have shortcuts though, too? Like, uh, you know, things that they've done before, so they they sort of reference like, well, this is like how we did it on five, or yeah, you know what they do? They do, uh, they would when, when we were talking about, you know, a scene or a character, what, what someone would say, mm -hmm. uh, there would be a little snippets of that. You know, Reese would say, hey, you know. Uh, uh, well, we, we, I said that joke in uh, four, okay. so I can't eat you know, this in there. I, you know, right. do this and that, and 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 so that was interesting to, to you know, to have it be so much history right. that they were pulling from other movies, saying, right. "Oh, well, well, you know, we did that in the thing." And, oh, well, I, my characters can't say. This. And it was interesting because they had to tell sometimes they had to tell Gary, you know, "Hey, Gary," because you know, he said, "Well, I did that, and my character wouldn't do that because in three or in you know two right. or whatever." Right. So uh, there was a. There was an interesting, you know, they all they knew they know the characters so well. Right, they've, right. they've been in those shoes for so long. And now you have the shorthand, which I'm excited about. Well, in the next few. So, uh, let's see. Anas right. Shahid asks, "Hey Scott, how did it feel meeting The Rock for the first time?" Uh, he's a lot bigger <laughs> than uh, than you think. Right. He's a big guy. You go, Ooh, that guy is big. <laughs> but 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 a teddy bear. Yeah. Say. Oh yeah. Total total teddy bear. And. Uh, Hysterical on set, right? Yeah, oh, that's got to be a lot of fun. Uh, like this guy, <laughs> like that teddy bear, bear there. Yeah. Can we nickname him Rock? 
Yeah. How did he get there, by the way? Be the rock. Strange. He's just sort of eavesdropping on our conversation. Yeah, he is. Uh, John Castor wrote in before this and asked what your passion project would be and if you have aspirations to direct. Uh, sure, yes, definitely. Uh, I think as, I, as, as the longer I'm in this business, the more I realize that um, being an actor, you don't have a lot of control. Mm -hmm. uh, you're sort of just free floating. You know, some parts you're, you're trying to go out for haven't even maybe even been written yet. Right. Uh, so uh, to be a director, to create your own content, um, it's definitely a next evolution uh, and is a must for me okay. because if I can't get control, if you can't you know, hold on control, then, then you're just sort of, you're just sort of free floating. Right. Yeah. right. And also in this industry, it seems like there's more outlets too for you to explore creatively. Um, yeah. With other ways to stream films nowadays, it's not, it doesn't have to always be theatrical kind of thing. So. Yeah. And, and and another thing is, you know, another thing I I just sat with, I got an opportunity to sit with uh, Robert Rodriguez. Okay. Oh, and nice. And he was telling me, you know, a, a big, an interesting thing for him is he's kept the budgets uh, of his films relatively small mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to you know, some of these things. And by doing that, he's able to uh, maintain a lot of control. Sure. And tell people pretty much to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. It's good power to have. Yeah, it's great because you know you you, you can't make a movie as a, as an artist as a director uh, with somebody telling you no, you don't want to do this, or I don't want you to do this, or I don't want them to say this, or they should wear this. They should. It becomes not a creative uh, place to create, you know, a, a movie that's got some authenticity. Totally. Uh, so that that was interesting to hear from him. Um, and just say, okay, well, you know, that's that's smart. I, I think that's that's the, what you're doing. What you're doing is right. I hope you guys collaborate sometime soon. That'd I would be love really that. fun. Uh, all right, Daniel Jarbo asks. I know you've worked with big names before, but what was it like working with such a big, a full big cast, especially working with like Kurt and Jason Statham, who we haven't talked about yet. Sure. Uh, what was it like working with the, the cast? You know, just with, how big it was. Yes. I remember there was there was one there was one scene we were working on for about a week and okay. I think it was uh, it's, it's a scene where we're in this big conference room mm -hmm. and we're explaining some stuff and just to look around and to see Charlize Theron, Dwayne Johnson, um, Tyrese, right. Vin, um, Michelle, right. uh, Natalie, you, you're sort of just going <laughs> this is crazy. Right, right, this is right. the biggest movie I've ever been on. Right. Yeah. Do you remember watching those the first ones? Do you remember like when did you catch up with them? When did you with uh, the with first the Fast first? and the Furious? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? the first Fast and the Furious I was a big fan of. Mm. Um, it came out uh, probably right around the time I was, I don't know, seventeen, okay. eighteen, something, something like right around that, right there. And uh, so you know, it was it was like my demographic. It yeah. was. It was electric, you know. Right. The first one was was just electric, and it was it was it was you know the first time you'd seen anything like that on film, and it was about cool underground car culture right. that uh, you know, no one had uh, uh, even explored. You know, I mean, the, the inception from from this was an article in Vibe magazine, right. um, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, that was about underground car culture that actually took place in New York, right. okay. which was uh, which was interesting. You know, then obviously they set the film in L.A., mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, I was a huge fan. And that first one has such a California feel to it. It does, and I'm a, I'm a California guy, so Absolutely. I, you know, I had a, there was a small place in my heart for that movie. All right, we're, uh, we have a few more questions before we run out of time. So sure. Chavez Jennifer asks, did you do most of your own stunts? Yeah, I, I try to always do my own stunts. Okay. I mean, that's the fun part uh, for film for me. Um, you know, I mean, my dad always did that sort of stuff, sure. and that was, the, that was the fun stuff. You know, it was like, get out there and go do it. You know, go jump over the damn railing or fall on the thing or punch the guy. I mean, that's the... Why take an action movie if you're not going to do the action yeah, parts, no. right? Yeah, no, I totally understand that. Uh, Rihanna Burton wrote into us, and she wants to know, what was the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Listen. Listen more. You know? Mm -hmm. you, you know what do I know at 31 years old? You know, just... You know, every day is a, a day to learn and listen to other people and... I love it. Yeah. That's a really good one. All right. Uh, I think we have two more that we can fit in. Uh, Sean Muga asks... What would you say yes to doing? What made you say yes to doing this movie? And how did you feel about joining the show? Sean Muga? I like that name, Sean. It's a really good. Sean one. Muga. What made you say yes to this one? Uh, <clears throat> this one. I mean, you know, being a fan was was a you know. So I already loved the franchise. Um, this one was important um, because uh, I knew Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was like a big brother to me, mm -hmm. uh, and. 
I thought, you know, this would be a really cool way to, um, you know, be a part of his legacy mm. and, and, and contribute to something that, you know, meant so much to him. Um, so I thought that was, that was really, like, meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, the, everything just, you know, was just, I mean, who wouldn't say yes to yeah. being a part of this cool franchise, franchise right? That's absolutely true. Absolutely yeah. true. All right, last question goes to Kat Peterson, who asks, did The Rock really pick you up in that scene? The, you know, The Rock's a big guy, uh, <laughs> and he did really pick me up. Uh, not fun for me. He was uh, telling uh, Jimmy Fallon, and I said, oh, Scott loved it. Scott loved it. <laughs> Scott Fuck didn't love you. it. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you, Dwayne. Scott did not love it. <laughs> I'm here to confirm he did not love it. <laughs> not one little bit. Okay, so The Fate of the Furious is going to be in theaters on April 14th. Is that correct? And, uh, uh, April 14th. Yes, and yeah. it stars, of course, uh, the brilliant Scott Eastwood and a whole cast of people. Uh, I'm so, not brilliant. Don't, well, don't you be saying that. We are thank you so much at the Facebook Media Center. My name is Sean O'Connell. I'm the managing director of CinemaBlend.com, and I am really happy to be joined by Mr. Scott. Scott Eastwood, who is here promoting The Fate of the Furious, the eighth Fast and Furious film from Universal Studios. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited to have you here. We have questions that we solicited from our readers who are super excited about the film coming out next week. Uh, they want to ask you a number of things about it. I'm going to sure. read a few of them from them. And then, of course, if you guys want to weigh in with questions down below, we're happy to take your questions as they come in during the course of the time. But I want to start with, I'll start with a pretty easy one for you. Okay. Um, Katrina Wright. It wrote us, to, and she wants to know what it's like being the new guy in the cast. Katrina, Katrina, it is like the first day at school. Uh, you know, I mean, this franchise has been going on for so long. You know, me coming in, I was just so honored to be a part of it. Sure. Uh, I was like, you know, where do you, where do you need me? I'll, I'll go anywhere. Uh, but it, what, what was really great about it is, is they really just Oh, you know, just just let me in with open arms, okay. which was awesome. So your character is associated with a character who we know as Mr. Nobody. Yep. So yep. Michael Lee asked this, and I, I think this is a good place to start, too. What can you tell us about your character without spoiling anything going into the film? Sure. Uh, well, he is a protege under, uh, under Kurt Russell's character, mm -hmm. and uh, the team sort of gives him the name of Little Nobody. Uh, so he's the, brunt, he's the brunt of a few jokes okay. at my expense. How'd you feel about that? Little I liked it. You know what? It was fun because it, it was fun to play a character that was sort of, uh, he's, he's very different than me. He's you know, sort of a, rule, a rule guy, you know, uh, you know by the book uh, kind of guy. And that was fun. Okay. I, I, I thought I had a good time doing it. Do we learn more about that organization that you guys are part of? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, I like that. Okay. Maybe. All right, well, I know some people ask this, too. How much activity do you get in the cars? Uh, yeah, I get some good car time. Do you really? I do. Uh, I'm, I'm the rookie, so I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not as seasoned as a driver as, uh, as the rest of the team. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I get some good car time. So now we're basing this off of things that we've seen in the series prior to sure. this and the trailer so far. But Sarah was asking that the series appears to use practical effects as much as possible. Um, is that accurate? And were you a little bit surprised in filming the stunt scenes of just how much they're able to accomplish? You know, well, the great thing about these, these films is they have an incredible stunt team. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's, it's I mean, it's, it's massive. What most people don't understand is there's a, there's a whole second unit that films alongside the first unit mm -hmm. that handles a lot of the heavy lifting. So they do all the car stunts. Right. All the big vis effect shots that you know we can't do or don't need to have the principal actors incorporated in. So, uh, what's actually is re really is cool for the actor is when I got to see the film for the first time like mm. a week ago. I get to see all these shots and all the stunts come to life mm. that I read. You know, you're reading the script and you're going, oh, "Okay, cool, car flies over submarine. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Here, this, that." <laughs> and then, so you you sort of get to see all this stuff come to life and you go, "Wow." You know that, that was that was so much bigger than I thought it was, or you know, it was, right. you know, it's 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 so it's fun for for uh, you know the actor. And I think with uh, with this series too, almost like the Bond series now, the locations are as big of a part of sure. of the each new chapter. So yeah, talk Cuba, to me a bit about right? yeah, where do you guys Cuba, go in this one? New York, right? And then uh, uh, you know, you, you, Iceland. It, ice, well, it was shot in Iceland. Okay, but we you know it was Serbia, Russia. Oh, know, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, and you're in all those. You're in those locations. You went to those places. No, uh, we didn't. We didn't. I never had to go to Iceland. Okay. Uh, I never had to go to Cuba. Okay. Uh, oh man, you lost out. On yeah, all these yeah, I missed trips. out. I'm gonna talk. I'm hopefully you know maybe talking to the writer if they'll have me back. <laughs> so, you know maybe 
it could, I could be in that tropical beach location too. Right, right. Well, that leads me to our, actually our next question. Uh, Anna Silva wants to know, and I think this is a good one because everything about this franchise is family, and they keep sure. adding new members of the family. Yep. Without giving away things that happen, do you view this as a one-off, or is this? Are you part of the franchise now, and something that? Might oh, hey, look, you know that's up to um, Universal and Vin and everybody who's you know invited me to be a part of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, if they'll have me back, I would love to be a part of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, okay. fingers well, crossed. Because this, I, I think they're saying that this could potentially start a new trilogy of films. Do you, sure. do you think that there are storylines that are set up in this I think one? There's, I think there's a, 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 an incredible uh, opportunity to, uh, to, to make an, you know, this sort of be a, a trilogy mm -hmm. and, and, and do a, you know, a, a thing. Of, it, it, it's cool about this, this franchise. Is it's gone, so it's changed, and it's right. morphed into so many different things. Right. Right? It's obviously kept its core. Uh, its core values, right? <laughs> Family and and uh, the car culture, insane and, and stunts, insane stunts, right? right? That just been the Annie's been upped every time. Uh, but I think the sky's the limit for this franchise. What can you tell fans about F. Gary Gray? What kind of director is he like? He's great. Uh, F. Gary is. I mean, he is a you know he's a total visual guy. I mean, stuff that you you go. Whoa! I didn't think you could fit that in there, or, or you know, how were you planning on doing that? That's right. that's pretty ballsy. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a clip. Uh, we have a clip from a new film, The Fate of the Furious, sure. which is going to be in uh, theaters on April 14th. This is a scene that's uh, it's you and The Rock and Mr. Nobody, and yep. I think it's we're going to let it speak for itself. Okay. What happens in it? So let's check it out. Give it a look. All right, that was a bad idea. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a bad idea. You don't talk like that to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, lesson learned. Yeah, lesson learned. Uh, when I went to the set of Guardians of the Galaxy, I sure. uh, interviewed Chris Pratt, and he, yeah. all he wanted to do was gush about Kurt Russell. Uh, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, for, the guy's the man. We're close to the same age. You and I grew up on Kurt's films. Sure. Tell me about working with him. What's that like? <clears throat> sure. I mean, he was, uh, I mean, I grew up on his films. Yeah. Uh, so to work with him is was, was, was sort of surreal. You know, you're going... It's Kurt Russell. Right, right, right. He's right next to me. So you get nervous like that too when you're working with an icon. He's he's just such a legend, and he's such a great actor. Right. I mean, people, I mean, he's. Just